All right, uh, market performance. Let's start off with the decision by the CBK to keep the CBR unchanged. Was that prudent? It was prudent, and I think the, C the central bank is sending two very key messages to the market. One is they're saying that we are done with fighting inflation. Let's get back to propping up the economy and kick-starting the economy, uh, despite the, the, the torrents that are, uh, that are going on right now. The second key thing they're saying the market is that we want, they want to boost liquidity. And um, you saw that um, about two weeks ago when the central bank decided to hike its overnight window by 175 BPS, I mean, there was a knee-jerk reaction from the banks and uh, the media thing was they started uh, adjusting upwards their base rates. And so, very two key messages that we are getting from that, uh, uh, from that decision today. Okay. Let's talk about the fact that, you know, we've seen very topsy-turvy actions on the part of the CBK. Raising the interbank rate, two weeks later reducing it. Now this decision not to tighten. There is just a sense that um, the market needs a little bit more certainty and the market needs decisive action, particularly to help banks boost their liquidity, particularly to stabilize the currency. And that keeping monetary policy tight is just not going to do that. Absolutely. Um, you look at... Uh there are two things here. There's an overnight window, and then there's a CBR rate. Um, and, and, and they are supposed to, they, ideally, in, a, in, a, in an ideal scenario, the, the, the overnight window is supposed to trade below the CBR. In a situation where the overnight window was hovering above the CBR rate, actually, it, in effect, it deoperationalized the CBR, which should not be the case. What well, the central bank is trying to say that let's make the two of them make sense to the market. Mm -hmm. And so, by keeping them afloat at the same rate, they're trying to say that we can manage the two of them. So mm -hmm. in terms of liquidity, and, and, and I, let me draw you back, on Monday there was a, uh, the bank floated uh, an auction for the reverse repo, which they actually pegged at 6.25%. And the, the, the response was amazing. The performance right. was, uh, actually the, the bank received 40 billion, you know. Okay, let's talk about the shilling because this should have a direct bearing on the shilling going forward. We're already seeing a shilling under pressure today with heightened demand for fuel products, also with global forces uh, that are taking their toll also on the currency. Um, a shilling has found a new resistance, some would argue, at about 90 shillings. That's what we're seeing now, and that's a worrying picture. Actually, uh, um, with our projection, we are still seeing... Um a tight range for the local unit and I think 91 will be a very huge resistance so uh, that, that's tight range and what we've just seen today the, the central bank uh, uh, leaving the benchmark rate at 6.25 percent they're also trying to give stability to the, the volatility that we've seen on the shilling and so in a nutshell we still might see a, a, a lot of tight range trading although um, there's, there, there is the, um, of course, there's a power rationing, and the, the KPLC is saying that there was a lack of planning prior. Mm. So obviously, energy importers, there will be a lot of demand from that side, and there will be a lot of pressure from energy importers, mm. especially oil importers, to mitigate the gap that we're having right now. So still a lot of pressure coming ahead for the shilling, but I think 91 still will be a a huge resistance for the local unit. So we might see a bit of tight range going forward. I mean, talking about energy rationing, that's effectively begun today. It's a really worrying situation, the fuel uh, issue in Kenya. And this reflects in the results that we've seen from Samir. The tire maker is that of the cost that they've incurred, a large component is due to a volatile currency and also ineffective uh, supply or inconsistent supply in fuel and rising fuel costs. How are manufacturers in general going to be impacted going forward? Um, Samia, of course, I, I'm, I'm quite impressed that uh, there was no downside in their results. They, they pretty maintained the top line and most of the things grew flat uh, year on year. And so despite the challenging environment, of course, you're having um, all manufacturing um, setups in Kenya. They're having a rough time in terms of when the, the energy distrib power distributor comes and says, hey, guys, you're having a, a ration. It's not, it's not a good news to their ears. And or couple with the fact that they're fighting uh, uh, accentuated volatility. And if, if you look at all importing um, enterprises, they're encouraging huge finance costs as a result of uh, foreign exchange losses. So I think 
those two key factors, energy and, and exchange rate volatility, will still continue eating with mm -hmm. their margins going forward. And most of the manufacturing enterprises, they will still have to incur such kind of um, losses right. um, for the two factors going forward.